Hello, my name is Anne DeSantis. I'm the director for the St. Raymond Anatis Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. I want to tell you what's been going on with us since we've been exist in existence in 2015. The Mercedarian Friars came together and decided that they wanted to start a foundation to make outreach to families in crisis. And that's exactly what they did when the St. Raymond Anatis Foundation came into existence as a nonprofit, 501c3, headquartered in Philadelphia. Since that time, I became the director in the beginning of 2018, and we basically have four facets to what we do. We offer prayer, priestly consultations, podcasts and videos, and also programs and events. Now, if you've never been to our website, just to, in to invite you to go to nonatis.org and check out all the great things that we've been doing. Because since that time, since we've been in existence, we've now helped hundreds of families who are going through really challenging times. And as you all know, we went through a really challenging time in 2020. So I'd just like to invite you to go and check out the great things that we're doing. And there's more to come. If you or your church community would like us to come and do some type of an event where we can talk about what we offer in terms of that pastoral accompaniment and making outreach to families in crisis, please do reach out to us. And I'm just so grateful to be able to serve, be able to serve people like you and your families. So again, learn about us at nonatis.org. Thank you. Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry present Journeys in Faith. Now, here's Andy Santis. Hello, welcome to Journeys in Faith here on Fiat Ministry Network. This is Ann DeSantis. It's great to be here with you again. I have an incredible guest for you all. Her name is Erin Friday. She is the CEO, President, and Head Coach at Mainline Accounting close to where I live in the greater Philadelphia area. Welcome, Erin. Thanks so much for joining us in Journeys of Faith. Thank you for having me, Anne. Yeah, I was excited because I interviewed you, pre, as we just said, before we started this um, taping, pre-pandemic. And so Erin was a guest on RVN TV's The Positive Side, where I used to work. And now here I am with Journeys in Faith on the Ad Ministry Network. And so I just love the work that you're doing. And just excited for my, the audience here to get to know you. Well, and I appreciate having the opportunity to share that with them. Oh, sure. We should make a shout out to a common friend of ours too, Laurie Menken, who introduced the two of us a while back. And you know, you're having this second opportunity to be interviewed with me. So again, thank you. Um, now the show's called Journeys in Faith, as you know, and it starts out really most of the time we, we talk about that faith journey and and you're doing such incredible work. You're your wife, a mom. You are working in the accounting field for so many years, helping people. But on top of that, you're also into a lot of philanthropic work. So tell us about you. Okay. Well, um, my journey in faith actually started way, way early. Um, uh, you know, I attribute a lot of what I learned, not just from my parents, um, but from uh, a lot of the religious sisters, especially the Catholic nuns um, that had a lot of uh, influence on my upbringing. 
Um, I started out uh, attending a Montessori preschool um, that was run by Sisters of the Assumption, uh, Raven Hill Academy. It's now uh, part of the campus of, I think, Thomas Jefferson University. Um, but that was uh, an early in introduction to the Catholic faith um, that then um, I took with me to uh, Holy Child in Rosemont, and that was the Sisters of the Holy Child. Um, I was there until third grade um, when uh, my family moved and we uh, attended St. Matthias in Bella Kingwood, um, which uh, is no longer a school, but uh, there's still a vibrant parish community there. And um, believe it or not, I still attend eighth grade reunions. There was something special about that class uh, that came together uh, and we still do stay in touch. Um, and uh, St. Matthias was uh, the Sisters of Mercy. Uh, so then I went on from uh, St. Matthias to uh, the Academy of Notre Dame in Villanova, and that was the, the Notre Dame sisters. Uh, so I feel like I've, I've had a, a complete sampling of um, uh, values from all different perspectives. Um, from uh, Notre Dame, I went on to attend Villanova University, both undergraduate and graduate. Um, and I think that was very supportive of my faith journey uh, because uh, the chapel is a main focus on campus there. Um, it's where I met, uh, well, I actually met my husband afterwards, but it was through um, uh, like friends that I had met at Villanova. And that chapel um, is a visual reminder with the gold crosses on the top of um, uh, God acting in our lives, as well as calling us to service and using the gifts and talents um, that we've been given. Um, so I, I think that educational foundation was also character building and um, so many role models uh, of people who had dedicated their lives to um, bringing the good news um, to other people. It's great to hear. And, you know, we're taping this. Actually, the show is pre-recorded. I will let the audience know that we're not live, but uh, we're very much with you either way. Um, but but this week, particularly this week, is what they call Catholic Schools Week. Yep. So I think it's just wonderful that you're talking about this right now, as it is very important for us to just go back to those roots and remember for people like you and I, Aaron, who are celebrating our faith in that way, the Catholic faith, is that it came from somewhere. And, and we thank those people that at an early age that, you know, you were exposed to, right? You were exposed to great education. Um, and just making a shout out for all those people watching who are involved in any kind of teaching and, and in the Catholic school system too. Um, I myself am um, actually on the board for my own parish council. I have to mention that as it's, it's a beautiful school too, St. Mary's Catholic School in Schwingsville, PA. And, you know, th that Catholic Schools Week. So thank you for bringing that up. It's, it's just really important. Well, um, and thank, yeah. thank you for the reminder about Catholic Schools Week, because again, that, that r reminded me of, of um, some other things that I forgot to mention, which is I have three kids of my own, and I say kids, but they're young adults now. Um, two are in university, and um, one has graduated. Um, but it was very important when it came time to send our kids to school. Um, it was very important for me uh, to make sure that they got a Catholic education. Um, and my husband is, is also a Catholic, but um, attended the, the public schools um, out in Pittsburgh. And, um, uh, you know, there are lots of discussions around um, whether or not uh, how good schools are and everything like that. Um, I, I think education is important, but I also think um, having religion be part of who you are and not just a class that you take um, it, it was a very important choice uh, for us. We were blessed um, with resources and we saved to be able to make that a reality because I do appreciate the fact that um, Catholic education isn't free. Um, and I also um, wanted to make sure that in addition to all the, the wonderful religious who were an important part of my um, uh, education that I also celebrate the lay people um, who also dedicated their lives at those schools um, to making sure that the Catholic faith was something that we lived and breathed every day, um, it, no matter which, uh, whether it was mathematics or history or whatever. 
I'm really glad we got a chance to talk about this because I think it is a, a, a topic of importance. And, and it, it's a really an investment, not just in, as you said, in education, but in that character building, right? And what's really important, the, the, the morality aspect of who we are as, as humans and giving back, right? That whole being, ide the idea of that discipleship and, and being able to do something really good because of your love of God. So, uh, and that's, you know, that's going to be a topic of this show because that's exactly what you've done, you know, and that you continue to do with the work that you're doing. Well, so, and I also yeah. think it's important um, when you're raising kids to realize that as parents, you're their primary teachers, but at a certain point, they're going to turn to their peer group um, for validation. And hopefully you've sown the right seeds that, and then add the right water and sunshine and everything else um, to help them grow. So if they do fall away, they return to their roots um, as they mature. Um, but that was another aspect of, of their education is surrounding them with families and peers who are also choosing um, a certain set of values and reinforcing what we're trying to do at home. Yeah, values and reinforcing. Right, because it's it takes that whole community effort in some ways, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. in terms of our homes, our you know husbands, wives, kids, neighborhoods, churches, communities, states. I mean, so I just I thank you so much um, for sharing on that. You know, we've seen how the Holy Spirit's leading this show. I didn't even know we were going to specifically <laughs> touch on like Catholic education, but uh, it's really a good time for us to do that too. Uh, and for people who are watching, you know, um, consider that. Support your local Catholic school. Um, maybe it's the grade school that you grew up in, you know, whoever, whatever it is. But I know that they need, a lot of them need your help. Uh, and even based on the fact of what I do, being the, the chair of the, the, the Catholic school that I attend, um, you know, St. Mary's Catholic, school, Catholic Church. Um, you know, there's churches like that all over the country, obviously, that either they have that... Um, not so much a parish school, but it could be that like where there's a few different parishes that are represented at one school, at one church and under an umbrella of a few churches. So they, they do need your help and, and your support, but most of all your prayers. So, um, well, and that's, that's what happened to the school that um, my kids started out going to Epiphany of Our Lord um, ended up being uh, part of a regional school. Regional um, school. That was the word I was yeah. looking for. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and, exactly. and also, I've met some really amazing people through um, an organization called Blocks, which is business leaders organized for Catholic schools. Um, and they do a lot of fundraising and a lot of really good work around um, supporting uh, schools in Philadelphia um, to, to make that a, an, a viable alternative, not just for Catholic kids, but uh, as you said, for neighborhoods and, and everything else where um, everyone can benefit from uh, the good, the good teaching and the good values of a Catholic education. That's right. That's right. I think what I'm hearing, the words that come to my, my mind is we're all part of that human family, aren't we? And, um, and that's beautiful. Um, now we're going to be taking a break in a little bit, but I thought before we did that, tell us a little bit more just about you, your family, um, and the work that you do, because you're with Mainline Accounting. And I do want to give them your, your website here, which is mainlineaccounting.com. Uh, so definitely check that out. And they're in Wayne, PA. So just tell us a little bit more. Um, sure. So uh, when I first got out of um, Villanova, um, I ended up uh, going to work for um, Coopers and Librand, which is, is part of PwC. And I got some audit experience uh, and really got to learn more about accounting. Um, I enjoyed the aspect of public accounting where you go around to, to different clients. Um, and uh, when I left there, I ended up working for 10 years for a smaller financial planning um, company as their controller. And I got to do internal accounting, um, which was very interesting. You, you touch every aspect of the business um, when you sit in an accounting role. And what I found from those two experiences is that I really enjoyed going to different clients um, but I also enjoyed the operational focus of, of the accounting work, not the what I term compliance work. So um, 15 years ago, uh, actually, uh, I started Mainline Accounting, which is a, a Pennsylvania CPA firm. 
uh, that we focus on outsourced operational accounting needs. So we operate as the accounting department for small businesses, um, nonprofit organizations, churches, actually, um, uh, of various denominations, Catholic, Episcopalian, um, Presbyterian. Um, and uh, accounting has not always been necessarily viewed as a helping profession, um, but I view it that way because we enable our clients to help uh, meet their organizational goals, and especially with our nonprofits and churches, we're an active part of helping them achieve their mission and direct their uh, resources to, um, you know, appropriate things to help them. Yeah, I, I remember we were talking a lot about this when you were on the positive side on RVN TV a couple years back, and I was just really impressed with you know the hands-on approach and that you you view yourself not as like this boss or you know, person who's just overseeing all these people, but you really are side by side with the people that you work with. I mean, you refer to yourself not only as the president and CEO, but the head coach, right? Mm -hmm. It's a coaching thing. It's not just this like subordinate with a boss kind of kind of a, a look at the way that you you work and what you do. Although I know there's going to be some of that, right? Because there mm -hmm. are people who are you know employees that work for you. But I, I just think that the way that you you the relationships that you've built with the, your clients uh, and, and are really re real relationships too. As you said, a lot of churches, nonprofit, you know, people who are uh, really, you know, they're doing wonderful work. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I just thank you so much. Uh, and we have a lot more to talk about because not only are we gonna talk about, continue to talk about what you do with mainline accounting and your professional life, but when we come back on the break, you're gonna learn a lot more about Erin and the uh, great philanthropic work that she's doing. So. Hold on tight. We'll be back here in just a few minutes on Journeys in Faith. Today, many students go to college with numerous questions about their faith, yearning to know if the seed planted in them as a child is both true and practical. Using the miracle on the road to Emmaus as a model, young adult ministers conversed weekly for three months with college students about the most pressing questions they had about the Catholic faith. As they journeyed together virtually, something amazing happened. Doubts disappeared, fears faded, and Jesus revealed that he is still alive. Hearts Burning Within Us, the latest book from Patchwork Heart Ministry, is a result of that grace-infused conversation. It is the perfect back-to-school gift for recent high school graduates and current college students. Get your copy for them today at patchworkheart.org or by calling 424-704-3278. That's 424-704-3278. Welcome back to Journeys in Faith. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Friday evening with my guest, Erin Friday. She is the president, CEO, and head coach at Mainline Accounting and a philanthropist. So Let's learn more about that aspect, Erin. I mean, there's so much to talk about. Uh, I know that Rwanda is a place that you visited so many times and you're doing great work there. So please tell us more. All right. So um, uh, interestingly enough, um, and, and Anya and I were talking about this a little bit before uh, the show, um, I have always been amazed at how um, God has worked in my life and managed to um, get me to where I need to be and put the right people in my life to make things happen. Um, and Rwanda is just one example. Um, I ended up uh, doing some work there for a client. And um, when I got my boots on the ground, realized that there was a need for um, accounting services, but in, in keeping with the country's goal to lift people out of poverty by building economic infrastructure. So it comes down to education and job creation. Uh, so I created Thousand Hills Accounting, which is a CPA firm that's licensed in Rwanda. I became a certified accountant in Rwanda. Um, and I have a team right now of three other folks there um, who were doing just that. We're helping entrepreneurial um, businesses and organizations like the American Chamber of Commerce there um, to further their mission and to create jobs and grow their businesses. And um, I was a founding member of the chamber there as a way to attract U.S. investment there, to 
um, help the economy and really the people have just been amazing. And while I'm there, it, it's hard not to um, get involved and, and want to help um, when you see how much we've been blessed with and how much of a need there is. Um, and it's ironically through clients of mainline accounting that um, the ben a lot of the work that I've done has, has, has happened. For instance, um, a shout out to uh, Radnor Soccer Club. Um, which uh, when they switched their logos, gave us a whole bunch of uh, uniforms um, that we were able to send over to kids um, at uh, Urukundu, which is a primary school early learning center for kids um, in Rwanda. Um, there's another organization, uh, Shooting Touch, um, that we were able to do um, vision screenings and send over glasses from the, the Lions Club, White Marsh Lions Club, which is my, my township. Uh, Lions Club uh, over there. And I, I feel like God has used me as a connector. Um, and, and it's funny, I don't think of myself necessarily as, you know, I'm, I'm not the one who uh, performed the cornea surgery to give this one little girl in Rwanda sight, but it was a Belgian doctor I met that I connected with someone who had a need and um, that kind of miracle was, was allowed to happen. So... That's really a beautiful story. If you yeah. think about it, that, that one little girl has sight because of that connection that you had and, uh, and how the Holy Spirit worked in bringing that all together. And people are continuing to be helped by you and by the work that you're doing and through a lot of other great people, I'm sure. But it's just a, a, a wonderful thing to hear how that idea that you had years ago of doing this and how it's really blossomed. Tell us about when you visit there, what is it like for you? Because I'm sure that it really becomes very real when you get off that plane and you arrive there in the, in the towns and be able to meet the people and see firsthand what's going on there. Yes, well, it's starting to feel a little bit like my home away from home. And certainly when, when it's um, like 30 degrees and lower in uh, the Philadelphia area, it's, I dream about being in 70, 70 degree weather in Kigali. Um, uh, but um, interestingly enough, um, as we're connecting all of this with my journey in faith, um, the Belgian doctor that I mentioned who's there and built a charity eye hospital connected me with uh, Belgian nuns, uh, a Belgian order of nuns. And I actually stay at a convent when I'm <laughs> when Oh, I'm that's there. amazing. Um, and um, I, I'm working, I, I have to use my high school French um, because um, the, they don't, they don't really speak a lot of English, but um, we managed to, to figure it out. Um, but I, I try and spend my work days in um, networking and um, trying to get word out about the business and work with my team over there to help develop and educate. Um, and then my weekends and some of my evenings are spent more on the philanthropic side, going to visit the basketball courts or the schools or um, you know, taking donations that I brought over um, from the U.S. Um, so uh, there, there are two schools that I'm involved in over there. One um, is the Gashore Girls Academy of Science and Technology. Uh, my very first day in Rwanda back in 2017, that's how I spent my day. And I was there because my next door neighbor here in, in Pennsylvania went there in 2016 with a group of girls from the University of Pennsylvania. So this is what I mean where I have to sit back and marvel at how these connections happened. And that school, as well as their funding source in Seattle, Washington, became clients of mainline accounting um, uh, because we were able to help them with, with, with their financial stuff as well as um, finding ways to help mentor the girls. There are three of the girls that I'm still very close to. Um, there's another organization, Agahozo Shalom Youth Village, which was modeled after the, um, after the Holocaust. Um, they created um, school, uh, these schools for orphans uh, of the Holocaust um, in these families. And um, I don't know if your audience remembers, but in 1994, there was a genocide uh, took place. A million, uh, almost a million people in 100 days um, were killed. Um, and uh, there were a lot of orphans from that. So uh, Anne Heyman, um, who uh, actually uh, passed away tragically, but she had this vision for this village to take in these youth 
And so now that we're so many years past that it's, it's no longer orphans of the genocide, but it's at risk youth in Rwanda. And it's just an amazing, amazing um, faith built place. Um, it just that and overlooks um, such beautiful country and yeah. Wow. Now I think even more has happened in, in this whole area of, of your um, nonprofit work in Rwanda since you were on the positive side, because some of the things that I'm hearing, I don't remember hearing about this. So um, that's just beautiful. I mean, it's grown even so much more even in the last couple of years, right? Because- Correct. And in fact, two yeah. of the, the paintings behind me were painted by students at Agahosa Shalom Youth Village. Um, and, and the one that with the boat was her father had passed away and he was a fisherman and that was her tribute to him. And the other that's in the upper uh, corner there with the elephant, it was a, a, a father elephant and a child elephant and her just remembering um, that closeness with her father that she had lost. It's so wonderful that, that you have that in your home, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that we're taping this from your home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, the way that the Holy Spirit, the way that God has worked in your life and other people's lives and, and really being able to help communities um, out, even outside of our own here, here in the United States, the fact that you're working over there in Rwanda. Um, tell our audience, if you could, they might be listening and thinking, I'd love to help. Like, what ways could they give and help for, for your mission? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, um any of the, the organizations um, that I've mentioned, um, I, I'm sure would, would love to, and, and I'm happy if they want to reach out to me directly because um, 30 minutes is um, uh, uh, very little time for me to go into all the amazing things um, that those organizations are doing. Um, but wherever they would have an interest or something that resonates with them that we've talked about, whether it's sports or um, uh, Catholicism or um, helping kids in Africa or education, or um, th there are so many um, great organizations that, that I'd love to again, be that connector um, for them. Yeah, I remember, I think I remember you using that word connector before. So I think that's one that God has placed in your heart. Um, would it be okay if we give them your email? I know that we have your your website there, but maybe your email might be good too, which is efriday at mainlineaccounting.com. Efriday at Mainline Accounting. So uh, is there anything else that's going on that you'd like to tell our audience about with anything to do with either Mainline Accounting or with um, any of the philanthropic work that you're doing? Uh, I guess um, the only thing, uh, I, I'm thinking this, more uh, sort of a, a message to folks. Um, and I don't know whether it's coming from the Holy Spirit or, you know, I, I said a prayer before we started our taping that I would say whatever um, needed to be said and it would just come to me in the moment. But um, I was reflecting on our, our current situation with COVID and how much that has really disrupted um, life as we know it. And um, presented quite a challenge to people economically. And um, uh, I was uh, struggling with how to get over the great divide that it seems to have created, especially in the US, that here is a virus that when you look at things like World War II that pulled people in this country together against a common enemy and a common evil um, that the US helped drive out. Um, why now when we have something on a global level that is threatening humanity, um, do we feel the need to take opposite corners and fight each other um, and just give a virus the chance to win and attack our weak points, right? So um, I wear this pin actually, um, and it says Umubunu and then under it, humanity. Um, and it, uh, there was another organization I got involved with in Rwanda called Aegis Trust. And it's all about remembering that common humanity. Um, and even as a Catholic, realizing that um, instead of judging others, that we should be accepting, uh, we're all sinners, we're all um, make 
mistakes. I know I've made colossal ones, um, but I, I also appreciate that the lesson that that's taught me and why that's in my life. Um, and uh, so when, I, when we're faced with challenges such as COVID, um, looking and saying, what is this here to teach me? What's, what's God's message? Um, obviously hope and trust are constant themes um, that come through. Um, but also, how is God asking me to grow? How is he asking me to use my gifts and talents um, in order to respond? Um, and so that's, uh, that's kind of the answer that came to me. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> oh, perfectly, perfectly. I love the hope piece of it. And like you said, we're all connected, interconnected with being a member of the human family and um, and and fear is a lot of times what separates us, right? We all have a, some kind of fear of somebody else or whatever, you know? So I just, I love how you articulated that. And part of our being Catholic is, you know, we're disciples with our, our Savior, right? Jesus Christ and his model of, you know, loving others and making that outreach. And, and that's exactly what you've done with all the work that you're doing. So I'm just uh, so grateful to you. We're great to grateful to you here at Fiat Ministry Network. Um, I ask also for people watching, if you haven't liked our page on Facebook, it's uh, Fiat Ministry Network. And our podcasting is also now through, um, has been through Patchwork Heart Ministry. So definitely like and share, um, you know, go on the YouTube channel. Uh, PatchworkHeartRadio.org is also another website too. So Erin, I just want to thank you again so much. It's great to reconnect with you and for people to know what you're doing, because I know all that you're doing is not for, it's not for you yourself, it's for other people. And, um, and so it, you're really benefiting so many people by just saying your yes to God in all that you do, whether it's professionally, uh, your personal life, or just all of the great work that you're doing, uh, not just in the United States, but actually in Rwanda and other places too. Well, and I want to thank you, Anne. It's always a pleasure to be a guest of yours. And thank you for all the work that you're doing in reaching out to your listeners and, and spreading the good news and, and saying yes to God. Oh, thank you so much. So everyone, I just want to give you one more time to way to connect with Erin Friday is mainlineaccounting.com. And she even invited you that if you have questions, you can email her at efriday at mainlineaccounting.com. We'll see all of you next next week here on Journeys in Faith. God bless. Journeys of Faith is a production of Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry. For more information about Journeys of Faith, email info at fiatministrynetwork.tv. And be sure to friend, follow, and like us on social media. Just search Journeys in Faith with Ann DeSantis.